Twas on the shores that round our coast from Deal to Ramsgate span that I found alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this wight on the shore recite in a singular minor key. Oh, I am the cook and the captain bold and the mate of the Nancy's brig, and the bosun tight and the midship height, and the crew of the captain's gig. And he shook his fist and he tore his hair till I really felt afraid. For I couldn't help thinking that the man had been drinking, and so I simply said, O oh, elderly man, tis little I know of the duties of the men of the sea, and I'll eat my hand if I understand, however you can be. At once a cook and a captain bold and a mate of the Nancy Brig, and a bosun tight and a midset might and a crew of the captain's gig. Then he gave a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen learn, and having got rid of a thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. "'Twas in the good ship Nancy Bell that we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we came to grief, which has often occurred to me. Ah, uh, pretty nigh all the crew were drowned, there were seventy-seven a soul, and only ten of the Nancy's men said, Here, to the muster roll. There was me and the cook and the captain bold and the mate of the Nancy brig, and the bosun tight and the midship might and the crew of the captain's gig. For a month we neither whittles nor drink, till a hungry we did feel, so we draw a lot and in accord and shot the captain for me. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate, and a delicate dish he made, then our appetite with the midship might we seven survivors stayed. And then we murdered the bosun sight, and it much resembled pig, and then we whittled free to the cook and me and the crew of the captain's gig. Then only the cook and me was left in the delicate question which of us goes to the kettle arose, and we argued it out as such. For I loved the cook as a brother I did, and the cook he worshipped me. <laughs> But we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hold, you see. I'll be eat if you dines off me, says Tom. Yes, that, says I, you'll be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. And exactly so, quoth he. Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do. For don't you see that you can't cook me well I can and will cook you. So he boils the water and takes the salt and the pepper and portions through which he never forgot, and some chopped shallot and some sage and parsley too. Come here, he says with a proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Twill soothing be if I let you see how extremely nice you'll smell. And he stirred it round and round and round and snipped at the foam and froth. When I ups with his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or less, and as I eating be the last of his chops, why, I almost drops for a wessel in sight I see. Now I never lark, and I never smile, and I never lark nor play, but sit and croak a single joke I have, which is to say, Oh, I am the cook and the captain bold, and the mate of a Nancy brig, and the bosun tight, and the midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig.